Our friend Elisa came to us with a wonderful linked data success story. We at Three Round Stones have been working with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to publish some of their information as linked data. Elisa was concerned about a cement factory near to her home in Northern California. I asked her what her zip code was. We went into the facilities registry system and looked up her zip code on our linked data site. When the search results came back, we can see that only some of the facilities of interest to the US EPA report pollution data. We can sort those ascending or descending in this table. The facility that Elisa was concerned about was Hansen Permanente Cement. By clicking into their record, we can see what the US EPA knows about Hansen Permanente. Elisa's specific question was whether they were producing mercury and putting it out of their smokestack, which she felt may be blowing near her home. By looking at this released information in the lower right-hand corner, we were able to see pollution reports spanning more than the last decade. By scrolling down to the most recent report, which in this case is 2010, we can see the report from mercury compounds. Clicking into that report, we can see that in 2010, Hansen Permanente's owners reported 611.95 pounds of mercury leaving their smokestack. This was confirmation for Elisa that Hansen Permanente cement plant did in fact produce mercury and it was going up their chimney. Elisa was excited about this. She was not only able to see the report but in the upper right, we can see that this data is available from Calamacus as RDF. So she's able to get the raw data behind her query. Elisa asked if we could get more information uh, about the chemical reports over time. I constructed a quick Sparkle query using Calamacus. If you can see, this Sparkle query has a bit of strange syntax to it. In quotes, there's a dollar sign and chemical. This is the way that Calamacus allows parameters to be passed into a Sparkle query. Any parameter called chemical on the query string will replace this value in the query and allow us to see the detailed report over the last couple of decades from this company. If we look at that report, we can see that we don't see any data. We can change that by using results on the query string and then naming a particular chemical, for example, lead. If we do that, what we get back is a uh, Google uh, JSON format that is perfect uh, for throwing to a Google chart uh, application. We can use that one query, that one Sparkle query, with seven different parameters. And we can plot over time all of the pollution reports that come from Hansen Permanente Cement. Here's the mercury that Elisa was worried about right up front. We can see there's the, two, uh, the 2010 report of 611 pounds. We can see at a glance that the amount of lead produced by the plant has been dropping rather precipitously over the last several years. Same thing with dioxins. Nickel seems to be relatively steady or climbing. Manganese is rather low. An ecologist or a biologist can address the relative risks of these chemicals, but it no longer needs to be done by rumor. It can now be done with data that's reported by the plan itself. What will Lisa do with this information? I don't know. That's the beauty of it. She had a pre-existing concern about a particular facility and a suspicion that they were putting mercury into the air. Now she has access to specific data about what they're really producing and how that's changed over time. She's closer to the truth. Perhaps she will be appalled at the results and seek changes in her community. 
Alternatively, she might research the acceptable levels of pollution and the science of exposure and determine that her concerns may be best applied elsewhere. Whichever way she proceeds, she will do so with better knowledge of actual facts and less on rumor and suspicion. That must be a good thing. Thanks for listening to our Linked Data Success Story.